Hello everyone, it's Father Gareth and Libby with another school assembly. Come on Libby, come and say hello to everyone. Happy hops. There we go. Come on and say hello to all the, all the children. I wonder, have you ever thought about the way something seemingly small and insignificant can have enormous power? I wonder if any of you have seen film of some of the terrible forest fires they had in Australia and California in the USA recently. There were scenes of devastation as vast forests were burnt in just a few hours. In some places, if the wind was in the wrong direction, the fire could move as quickly as 30 miles an hour or more. And of course, all of us who live in this area remember just how terrible fire can be because of what happened to Grenfell Tower. But how does such a fire start? And how does it become so big? Well, normally a fire begins with a very small spark, just like this, just a spark. That's all it takes. It's amazing how very small things like a spark of flame can have such amazing power. Or <clears throat> think of something like a ship, a huge tanker maybe. Ships might be enormous, but they're steered in the water by a very small rudder. <clears throat> That's the, the part of the ship at the back that means the captain can get it to go in different directions. Or another example <clears throat> is horses. I wonder if anyone's ever ridden a horse or if you know how you control a horse and make it obey you and move in the direction you want it to. It's a small piece of metal that's part of a horse's harness called a bit, which goes in the horse's mouth. And even though horses are really big, strong animals, the bit, even though it's very small, helps you to get the horse to do what you want. <laughs> but why am I talking about ships and forest fires and bits? What's all this about? Well, at school this week, we're thinking about bullying and why it's a really bad thing and how to stop it happening. And so I want us to think about our tongues and the ways that we, in which we use words. But why words? Words are so small and insignificant, aren't they? Yes, but rather like a tiny spark or a ship's rudder or like a bit in a horse's mouth, they can have enormous power, both for good and for bad. And so it's important for us to remember this when we talk to one another. It's so easy to say something cruel or unkind and think nothing more about it. But for the people to whom we've been cruel and unkind, those words may stay with them for a long time, giving them grief and hurt and sorrow and making them feel wounded inside every bit as much as if we'd hit them. But in the same way, when we remember to say thank you or well done or good job to encourage others with our words and be kind to them, well, it can make such a big difference and brighten someone's day. It may help them to realize they're actually really good at something. You know, none of these ideas are new. St. James wrote about exactly these same things nearly 2,000 years ago in a letter that appears in the Bible, in the book of James. Let me read some of it to you. James wrote this. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they're so large and are driven by strong winds, they're steered by a very small rudder wherever the captain wants them to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. With the tongue, we praise God, but with it, we also curse others who've been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. You know, when I was your age, 
grown-ups used to say something really unhelpful. They had this saying that went, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can never hurt you. But the thing is, it's not true. Words may not break your bones, but unkind words can break someone's heart and leave them feeling hurt, wounded and unloved. But the opposite is also true. Kind and encouraging words can make us feel amazing and spur us on to do even better things. So let's learn to be kind to one another. And if you see or hear someone who's bullying someone else and being cruel to them, don't join in. It's not clever. Learn to be a friend to those who need your friendship and set an example to others by being kind and thoughtful. Let's finish with a prayer. Let's light our candle. So let's pray. Dear Lord, you were a friend to the friendless, and when you saw people being bullied, you stepped in to protect them. Our words are so powerful, they can hurt or heal, injure or inspire. Help us always to show kindness to others, and so learn what it means to be your followers. Amen. So friends, that's the end of our assembly for today.